So I'm still working on the black and white version of this NCR computer and if you saw the first couple of videos you'll know that it's uh, not reading the or apparently not reading the contents of the floppy disk. I have found a fault with the floppy drive system and that it wasn't properly loading the commands into the floppy drive controller. I have fixed that and it does now appear to be reading the correct data from the floppy disk and we looked at the expected data on the disk and what was coming out of the floppy drive controller IC which is this one and the data appeared to be correct so the next thing in the uh, chain is the um, DMA controller and then the DRAM controller so we've got a D, uh, DMA controller over here and then we've got a DRAM controller over here now these two devices fulfill the functions that I implemented with discrete logic in the Z80 project. If you haven't seen that, um, you might want to review those videos because I do explain in quite some detail um, how DRAM is uh, written to and accessed uh, and also how DMA works, or better still, by the book that I wrote on the project. Um, but the next thing really to look at on this, because I don't have a schematic or the um, source code for the ROM that's on here. I do have the source code for the uh, contents of the CPM BIOS, but um, obviously it's not loading that, so it's not a lot of help for us uh, trying to go through that to see what it's doing. So the fault we've got is um, possibly not even related to the floppy drive controller system. It might be that it's trying to read the floppy drive controller and for another reason it's crashing. There's an awful lot of rework on the video board, so we've got this main CPU board, the big one, and then this board at the top is um, the video output board. It does fulfill some other functions as well and it interacts with the main board and the DMA system, but um, really it's mostly for video output. Now, the next thing um, I was wondering whether to continue with this repair because without a schematic and source code it would get very time consuming but just out of interest I've decided to hook up the logic analyzer to the actual DRAM and see if the data we're reading is getting to the DRAM. So again with the Z80 project videos I explain how DRAM works and uh, these are actually the same devices I used on my project so it should make a lot of sense if you see those videos. But I've got the logic analyzer hooked up to the data going into the DRAMs. Now, each DRAM is a one bit, so I've got the eight data um, probes connected one to each of the data inputs of each DRAM chip. Uh, and then I've got the analyzer hooked up to the RAS, CAS and write lines. I've also got it hooked up still to the DRQ line and the clock on the floppy drive controller chip. So we can use um, the clock on this and hence put the analyzer into state mode, which will make it easier for us to sort through the data. Uh, and the DRQ line will allow us to try and figure out um, where to start looking for the correct data. And uh, we can also use that to trigger the logic analyzer. So I've got this hooked up. The machine's actually powered up now. I've got the floppy disk, the boot, proper boot floppy disk in the drive. And uh, the next thing we'll do is move the camera and um, try and run the machine and see if we can capture any data and then see if the data is getting through to the um, actual DRAM. Now one thing I would point out here is that the um, address output of the DRAM controller, again it comes in two 8-bit chunks, um, it is inverted so um, on the analyzer it will appear to read correctly but the um, actual data coming out of this is inverse. It doesn't matter as far as the DRAM is concerned of course, it doesn't matter which cell you use for what actual physical address as long as you're consistent in the way that you do it. And the data we're looking for is of course the start of the CPM. Uh, this is actually the bootloader so what it should do is load the first few tracks, I think it's actually three tracks on this um, uh, bootloader it should uh, load the first um, few tracks starting with this value of C32, uh, sorry, C3, and then 21, 00, 43, 50, etc. It should load the bootloader and then it should hand control to that once it's in RAM 
and it should then uh, load the rest of the operating system. But initially we should start seeing these values coming through to the DRAM. Uh, they should appear on the data pins of the DRAM and then we should see a RAS um, strobe going low then a CAS strobe going low with the right enable line low and obviously the address will come through in two chunks and that's what we should see on the logic analyzer if uh, everything's working the way it should. So I'll move the camera and we'll see what it actually does. So looking at the logic analyzer you can see how I have it configured We've got the clock at the top, we've got the data, it's one bit for each of the devices, then the address bus, and as I said this is inverted so that we'll get the correct sense as far as the source code is concerned. We've got RAS, CAS, DRQ, and you can see we've got it um, set to trigger when the DRQ line goes high, that indicates that the floppy drive controller has read a byte from the disk, and then we've got the right line at the bottom. That's the right line going into all the DRAM chips, of course. So we'll arm this, and now I'll press the Enter key on the machine keyboard. And we've captured some data. So what we're looking for, as you can see, is the DRQ line going high. It then takes a few um, Z80 clock cycles to um, effectively get that data through to the DRAM. So we'll start looking. What we're looking for is a RAS signal, a row address strobe, followed by a column address strobe after a single clock cycle with the right line low. So if we start scrolling through, and this should all happen shortly um, after or during the DRQ high uh, portion of the signal. The DRQ line will go back uh, low when the system reads the data from the our floppy drive controller, so that might go um, back low before we've actually read the data. So we'll start scrolling through, shouldn't be too far along the way before we see something. DRQ line has indeed gone low, so chances are the data has been read. If we keep going through, notice we've got the RAS line going low, and then that's followed one uh, half clock cycle later of the CAS line going low. If you want to know what this is all about if you're not familiar with DRAM and uh, again if you go and look at the Z80 um, project and that will uh, I explain in some detail what this is for. Now remember that the address comes in two chunks so the row address strobe when it goes low latches the lower eight bits of the address into the memory chips so at this point whatever's on the um, address bus is what's latched into the lower 8 bits of the address latches in the DRAM chips and that, as you can see here, is 0, 0. What we're expecting here is a value, if you recall from the previous video, of 2000 hex and of course it loads the low byte first. So you can see it's loading a value of 0. That's uh, then followed with the upper 8 bits of the address, so the address bus um, from the DRAM controller changes to the upper 8 bits, in this case 20, it then lowers the column address strobe. Notice that the right line is also low, so we are writing to the device. And at this point, we write the data into the device. So if we follow this up, the data is, as you can see, C3. So if we look at our crib sheet, then the value we're expecting is C3. The next value is 21, and again, if you remember, the interval between the uh, floppy drive reading bytes is 32 microseconds because um, that's how long it takes to read each byte based on the rotational speed of the floppy disk. So we're coming at 3.4 microseconds so about 35 microseconds we should find another of uh, these uh, writes to RAM and the value we're looking for there is of course 21. So if we start scrolling across, keep an eye on the DRQ line, we're waiting for that to go back high. We're at 12 microseconds, 20 microseconds, 25, 30, and so, as you can see, right on time, we've got the DRQ line going high again. And at 35 microseconds, we have the DRQ line going long, so it's right on time, 
two microseconds since the previous one and once again we have the RAS, CAS and write and the data value as you can see when the CAS line goes low is 21 and that's exactly what we were expecting so we're getting 21 which is the value we should so if we keep scrolling across to the next event and we're looking for the DRQ line to go high again so we'll theory be 32 microseconds further on you could filter this out by the way using the analyzer but um, I prefer to do it this way uh, okay. okay again we've got RAS cast on the right and the value we're seeing the data value is uh, 20 now the standard value you're expecting is 0, 0 it is of course 20 because we have that offset to 2000 hex so this is correct the next value, we'll look at one more, should be 43. So the next event should give us a data value of 43 and that will be another 32 microseconds. So we'll keep going. And we've got another DRQ. Follow it through to the RAS, CAS and the right and the value is 43. Now remember that the address lines here are inverted they're actually on the board if you put a scope on it or if your analyzer can't invert them you'll get the inverse and the addresses will appear to be counting down rather than up because the bits are inverted um, but you can see that the address now is 2003 and that's exactly what we would expect so zero so one byte in each zero one two and the next one is three as you can see on the listing and the value there should be 43 so the address is correct data value is correct and all the signals going into the DRAM are correct so we'll move the camera back down so the correct data values are coming out of the floppy drive controller they're making it through the DMA control system making it to the DRAM controller and then they're appearing at the DRAM devices themselves the data is correct the address is correct the strobe lines and sequence is correct so it's writing the data into DRAM so it appears that it's actually reading the correct contents from the floppy disk into RAM but it's still not working now this is starting to point to one of two things either we have a completely unrelated fault this is stopping the machine from starting up and it's, it just won't read the floppy disk because the machine is basically not running the way it should although it is reading the floppy disk which does require a great deal of the machine to be functional so it's kind of strange if we wouldn't at least get some sort of error message there are no error indications these LEDs in the bottom right hand corner are an error indicator and um, they can show various errors depending on um, the, the tests that are carried out and the function that's uh, being executed on the machine um, and of course it could be that this floppy disk is not the right one for this system which is what I'm starting to think but unfortunately without um, the source code for the ROM as you've seen me do in, very, in uh, earlier videos other videos I uh, reverse engineer the contents of the ROM get to the point where it's comparing the first few bytes coming off the floppy disk when it tries to boot up and if they're wrong it um, doesn't uh, succeed but it does indicate that um, we've either got the right disk or the wrong disk that's really where we need to go next before we start spending hours and hours going over the rest of the hardware because I know there are other faults on here as well but I haven't found one yet that would stop it from booting uh, other than the one we've already fixed um, so really what I'm going to do is I'm going to go away and have a, a bit of a search for the uh, schematic for this particular board which I don't have and the uh, more importantly the source code for the uh, ROM and if I can find those then it will be worth carrying on with this we can hook the logic analyzer up but without that um, I'm not sure I want to invest the time to reverse engineer the code in this but so uh, I'll go and have a search um, come back if I find anything okay well it's actually the next day now and uh, luckily I have had some success in my search I found what appears to be the schematics for this particular board I don't know how accurate they are but certainly they'll be a lot closer than the version I've been using so far which was for the color version and uh, I've also found the schematic for the display board that's the board at the top there and again that should be quite useful in helping us track down some of the faults um, but more importantly I found the source code listing for the 
um, the ROM, the, the main system ROM. And that means that what I can do next, and what I'll do in the next video, is I'll hook the logic analyzer up to the Z80, and we can start working our way through the code and see why it's not um, reading the contents of the floppy disk. And um, as I say, it might just be it's the wrong disk, but we can now hopefully figure that out by um, working our way through the uh, main ROM source code. So we will do that in the next video.